kısmen. In the name of the Father and the Son, the Holy Spirit, one God, Amen. Everyone, welcome back uh, to chapter 10. Uh, and as uh, we noticed from the last maybe couple of weeks, we're kind of like lost, but not lost. We understand pieces, bits and pieces here and there. And you find yourself like understanding one thing and then like you cannot get the full picture, which is fine. Adil said that exactly the same. And guess what? Towards the end of the book of Daniel, actually, this is exactly what God promised or explained to Daniel. That your book, your writing and the things that I'm saying to you actually that people for years and years and centuries and generations after you, they will be reading what you saw and what you wrote down, and they will always discover something new every time they read it. Okay, so that's the we're gonna if if we stick around until the end, towards the end of this book, you're gonna you're gonna read exactly that. Okay. So because of that, I'm not going to be able to explain every single word, every single sentence. Okay? <clears throat> so you're going to find me jumping a little bit, giving a bit of a bigger, big picture understanding of things. Okay. Um, just to bring everyone, we're reading Daniel chapter 10. But just to give an idea, Daniel at this point is at... Uh, uh, later time of his age, like close with how 80? 80, over 80, over 80, something like that. Okay. So he is really, he knew that from, uh, we said what, uh, Jeremiah, that it's going to be 70, 70 years. Jeremiah, right? Jeremiah. Jeremiah, it's 70 years. The people of Israel are going to be in exile <clears throat> in uh, Babylon or Persia. Okay. It was one kingdom. Okay. So basically, and we spoke last time about why God allowed them, why God kind of like, you want to say, punished them or consequences because of their sin. We spoke about this, their sin is that they did not allow the land to rest so the 70 years is the accumulation of uh those years that they did not allow the land to rest okay so therefore the israelites were taken captive to babylon to the kingdom of persia okay so now it's time for them to go back 70 years is coming to an end and now they're supposed to be going back but Daniel cannot seem to see that this is happening. And as we're going to start reading, actually, we're going to discover that King Cyrus already allowed them to go back, but they don't want to go back. They don't want to go back. They're kind of like, uh, stay still where they are. They don't want to go back. We're going to go in a bit small details. Okay. So this is what caused Daniel to stand and to start to pray and says, I don't understand. I don't know. I don't get it. What, what's going on, God? Like, why you're not like carrying up, getting things done and why people are not going back and that. So this is where we come in and see Daniel uh, standing. And we spoke about it last week, how he stood up to pray, how he, uh, his posture, his fasting, his, um, his supplications, his confessions, right? His uh, bowing down and all of that. And from last week, we saw how Daniel, as, as a result, every time I pray, there are two things that will happen, right? Number one, I feel what? What did we say? Number one, a response to my prayers always are two things. What? Those who were here with us last week. Number one, that I feel that and discover that I am dearly loved by God, right? And the number two is what? 
in prayers. When Archangel Gabriel appeared to him, he spoke to him about who? The coming of? Hmm? The coming of the Messiah. And he started to talk to him about Christ. So two things in my prayers, just like happened with Daniel. Okay? I feel comforted because I'm greatly loved. Number two, I meet Christ in those prayers. And as I meet Christ, then I should be becoming Christ myself, small c. This is, if, if, you, if you got nothing from last few weeks, we should come out with this conclusion. Does that make sense? Okay. It's not that I'm, I'm going to pray, I'm going to ask some request, and then God is going to answer me, give me signs. This is all byproducts. But the very important things we're going to see this, theme repeated here today okay with that in mind now we're gonna go and dive into chapter 10 so we'll give, give perspective context questions before we jump into chapter 10 because this is pretty gonna be intense not in the way you think it is he's gonna meet the lord jesus christ face to face that's all that's all He's going to meet the Lord Jesus Christ face to face. Uh, anyone uh, who, who read the uh, Revelation? Or briefly, or just roughly any idea about Revelation? You're going to see uh, similar scenes from the book of Revelation happening in chapter 10. Okay? And when you, uh, when you see them, please just put up your hand, put something, or say, yes, Abuna. Like, yeah, I see that. Oh, I saw it in Revelation. Oh, I heard it in Revelation. Oh, I remember this from Revelation, and so on. Okay? Very good. <clears throat> so, chapter 10. Daniel chapter 10. The third year, in the third year of Cyrus, king of Persia, a message was revealed to Daniel, whose name was called Belshazzar. The message was true, but the appointed time was long. And he understood the message and had, and had understanding of the vision. Okay? Understood the message, that means he, he knew the time. But he has an understanding of vision, that means he's still still in the process or like trying to process okay he did not fully understand everything in those days i daniel was mourning three full weeks i ate no pleasant food no meat or wine came into my mouth nor did i anoint myself at all till three whole weeks were fulfilled Three weeks, 21 days, or 20 days, okay? So, King Cyrus, what is the first thing that you notice here? What year of his reign? The third year. Okay. And King Cyrus allowed the, uh, allowed the, the, the Israelites, the Jews, to go back to Jerusalem from all over his kingdom, okay? In what time? He allowed them to go back. He ordered them to go back to Jerusalem in his first year as king. So this is the third year. So three years and we are here. Okay. Where to find that? Quickly flip to Isaiah chapter 45. Isaiah Isaiah was about 150 years before this. So about 150 years earlier, Isaiah spoke about this. Okay? Just to give you how, how detailed and how accurate uh, the Bible and, and, and the prophecies are. So if you go to Isaiah chapter 45, um, I'm going to go through it really quick, a few verses. Amazing. Thus says the Lord to his anointed. Who is the anointed of the Lord? 
to Cyrus, whose right hand have held to subdue nations before him and lose the armor of kings. Now, very first thing to get our attention is what? About Cyrus. What's so special about Cyrus? Anyone knows? Hmm? You can shout, yeah. Say, what's so special about Cyrus? God is using him. Is he a Jew? He's not a Jew. He's not an Israelite. He's not one of the people of God. Okay? So basically you can say like he has no connection technically to God. But yet something very special is mentioned about him here. What does the Lord say about him? His anointed. His anointed means like God appointed him. Okay? That's very 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 important so god appointed him it says and then he continues he says to open before him the double doors that means he's going to open the doors for his people the israelites to go back so that the gates will not be shut i will go before you god is telling cyrus 150 years before his birth before his coming becoming king he's telling him i'm gonna go before you cyrus okay like this is this is huge 150 years ahead of him god is talking to him how is that okay he continues god talking to him and make the crooked places straight i will break in pieces the gates of bronze and cut the bars of iron i will give you the treasures of darkness and hidden uh, rises of secret places that you may know that i the lord who call you by your name calling who by your name who's calling who by their name it's just simple we're reading a text there's no prophet here god is yes god is calling cyrus by his name right calling you by your name am the god of israel for Jacob, my servant's sake, and Israel, my elect, I have even called you by your name. I have named you, though you have not known me. I am the Lord, and there is no other. There is no God besides me. I will gird you, though you have not known me, that they may know from the rising of the sun to its setting that there is none beside me. I am the Lord, and there is no other. I form the light and create darkness. I make peace and create calamity. I, the Lord, do all these things. Amazing. Isn't it? That God is talking through Isaiah about Cyrus, who's going to come 150, 150 years, and he's going to uh, open doors and open path for the Israelites to go back. Okay. So, in the very first year of Cyrus, how do we know that? Flip quickly to Ezra, the book of Ezra. Ezra is a priest who came um, during the, uh, the time of Daniel, and he was documenting the return of Israelites. And it's one of the two books that we've been debating to study after Daniel because it just carries what happened, right? So... Ezra chapter um chapter one. Oh. Oh, I yeah. get it really quick. Ezra, if you're looking for Ezra, it should be before uh I'm looking for it. Ezekiel. Did you find it, guys? Yeah, I'm looking. My Bible. Okay. It's after Chronicles. Okay. Yes, yeah, very good. Thank you. Thank you. Lots of papers here. Okay, so I'm not going to read much, but a few verses. Now the first year of Cyrus, king of Persia. You notice 
You remember what happened with Daniel? Daniel is the third year. Ezra is now, this is a history. This is not a prophecy. He's writing uh, events that took place. Okay, what when we read from Isaiah, that's 150 years before the return. Ezra is documenting the events, the actual things that happened. Okay, just trying to give you an idea like what was the prophecy and what actually took place. Okay, good. So here is what Ezra wrote. Now in the first year of Cyrus, king of Persia, that the word of the Lord by the mouth of Jeremiah might be fulfilled. Remember, 70 years. The Lord stirred up the spirit of Cyrus, king of Persia. The Lord stirred up the spirit of Cyrus, king of Persia. Why don't you can put the underline here. When does God stir up my spirit? Okay. And what I should respond. So the response of Cyrus so that he made a proclamation throughout all his kingdom and also put it in writing, saying, so that means like the king at that time made it, made it in writing and sent it to the whole kingdom. Thus says Cyrus, king of Persia, all kingdoms of the earth, the Lord God of heaven has given me and he has commanded me to build him a house in Jerusalem, which is in Judah. This is Cyrus, who is not a Jew, who is not Israelite, saying to everyone in his kingdom, God has appointed me and put it in my heart to build a house for him in Jerusalem, which is in Judah, who is among you of all his people. If you're an Israelite, may his God be with him and let him go up to Jerusalem, which is in Judah, and build the house of the Lord God of Israel. He is God, which is in Jerusalem. And, who, and whoever is left in any place where he dwells, let the men of that place help him with silver and gold, with goods and livestock. Remember how in Isaiah he said, God will make Cyrus help the people, but also he will, um, he will ask Cyrus to make all nations help the Israelites to go back to Jerusalem. Okay? Besides the free will offerings for the house of God, which is in Jerusalem, then the heads of the fathers, houses of Judah and Benjamin and the priests and the Levites with all whose spirits God had moved. This is the second time in this book, God has moved their spirits. That means there are people, they responded to God's stirring up that desire in them, responded. And there are people who said, eh, I don't care. Okay. Uh, arose go, uh, to go up and build the house of the Lord, which is in Jerusalem. And all those who were around them encouraged them with articles of silver and gold, with goods and livestock and with precious things, besides all that was willing, willingly offered. King Cyrus also brought out the articles of the house of the Lord, which Nebuchadnezzar had taken from Jerusalem and put it in the temple of his gods. Okay, now going back to Daniel chapter 10. We're jumping a little bit quite often. It's very important. Now, why am I doing this? Why are we doing this jumping back and forth? There is a, some something very important here that we need to get through. Cyrus is not one of God's people. Okay? Yet God moved him to do God's work. Even, even if I am not one of God's people, if I allow myself to be an instrument in God's hand, God will still be able to use me strongly okay even the god's people that we read about when they were moved by god they responded positively they responded by going back so this is very important cyrus anointed one of of god 
Therefore, each one of us, we are anointed of the Lord. God moves us to do his work. So we need to move. We need to do his work. If we stop and delay, this is what's going to happen to us. We're going to see what's going to happen with Daniel. What God is going to tell Daniel in chapter 10. Is this clear? Is this easy? Is this simple? Okay. Good. We're good. Okay. Uh, anyone online? Any questions? We're going to be going a bit faster from here on. So now back to Daniel chapter 10. Okay. Now on the 24th day of the first month, as I was by the side of the great river, that is the uh, Tigris, I lifted my eyes and looked and behold, a certain man clothed in linen, whose waist was girded with gold of Euphes. His body was like beryl, his face like appearance of lightning, his eyes like torches of fire, his arms and feet like branched bronze in color, and the sound of his words like the voice of multitude. And I, Daniel, alone saw the vision, for the men who were with me did not see the vision, but a great terror fell upon them, so that they fell, they fled to hide themselves. Can you imagine the, where do you see this? Where do you see this image? Hmm? Hmm? Adam and Eve. Okay. The image of... Uh, yeah. How did you know it's gone? No, that's good. That's good. <laughs> you're right. You're absolutely right. It's God. It's the Lord Jesus Christ. Yes. Before the incarnation. Yeah. But the same image, where do you see it? Transfiguration. Good. That's one place. Yes, good. Very bright. Yeah. Another, another even more detail. Revelation. Revelation with John, the beloved. He, he, he explains him exactly the same. Beginning of Revelation that he, he sees him and, you know, and he says like his voice, his, uh, his words are coming out like very strong. Very good. But now you're in front of Daniel can only see the vision, but the men with him cannot see the vision. Now, this is a gradual or progression in Daniel. Those who were with us here from the beginning, you remember Daniel at the beginning, he was being told dreams and he would interpret them. Right. Then he would come to see dreams himself. OK, and then he saw a vision in chapter eight alone now he sees vision and other people also can recognize and see like there is a vision but they don't see what is happening okay so there is progression happening here so and i daniel alone saw the vision for the men who were with me did not see the vision but a great terror fell upon them so that they fled to hide themselves therefore i was left alone when i saw this great vision and no strength remained in me, for my vigor was turned to uh, frailty in me, and I returned no strength. Yet I heard the sound of his words. And while I heard the sound of his words, I was in deep sleep on my face, with my face to the ground. Reminds you of another person? On the ground? No? Huh? Paul? St. Paul, yeah. 
that's a similar one. Simple on the ground. Good. You remember those, uh, the, the vision that St. Paul saw and people around him heard a sound, but they cannot uh, really say who what, what was happening, but he was on the ground. Okay, another person, a clearer one. Mm. John, John the Beloved. If I go to uh, Revelation and I read exactly what happened with John the Beloved, you're going to be uh, amazed. The similarity of, of the actions. The next one is amazing. Okay, why don't we just read a little bit from Revelation? I wasn't counting on reading that, but because I see like your face is like, oh, what? What? I thought you knew what's happening in Revelation. Okay, really quickly, Revelation chapter one. The revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave him to show his servants things which must shortly take place. And he sent and signified it by his angel to his servant, John, who bore witness to the word of God and to the testimony of Jesus Christ, to all things that he saw. Blessed is he who reads and those who hear the words of this prophecy and keep those things which are written in it, for the time is near. John, to the seven churches which are in Asia, grace to you and peace from him who is and who was and who is to come and from the seven spirits who are before his throne and from Jesus Christ, the faithful witness, the firstborn from the dead and the ruler over the kings, the earth, to him who loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood. I'm going to just... Uh, Verse 7, Behold, he is coming with clouds, and every eye will see him, even they who pierced him, and all the tribes of the earth will mourn because of him. Even so, amen. I am the Alpha, the Omega, the beginning and the end, says the Lord who is and who was and who is to come, Almighty. I, John, both your brother and companion in the tribulation kingdom and patient of Jesus Christ was in the island is called Patmos for the word of God and for the testimony of Jesus Christ. I was in the spirit on the Lord's day. I heard behind me a loud voice. Okay. And that's the Lord Jesus Christ saying, I am the Alpha, the Omega and continues. Then in uh, seven. Huh? Yeah. The, okay. But uh, can I read 12? Thank you. Then I turned to see the voice that spoke with me. And having turned, I saw seven golden lamps. And in the midst of the seven golden uh, lamps, like the son of man, clothed with garment down to his feet and girded about the waist with golden band. Does that match what happened with Daniel? Okay. His head and, and, and hair were white like wool, as white as snow. And his eyes like, remember what Daniel said? His eyes are fiery. Flame of fire. His feet were like fine brass. As if refined in furnace. And his voice as the sound of many waters. Multitudes, right? He had in his right hand seven stars out of mouth, went sharp two-edged sword, and his countenance was like the sun shining in strength. And when I saw him, I fell at his feet as dead. This is 17. Uh, but he, led, he laid his right hand on me, saying to me, do not be afraid. I am the first and the last. Okay, now switch to Daniel. Switch to Daniel. What's the paper here? I need to find it. Okay. So in, in verse 9. So now Daniel is um, uh, on his uh, face, facing down. Verse 10. Suddenly a hand touched me, which made me tremble on my knees and on the palms of my hands. And he said to me, O Daniel, man, 
greatly beloved. Greatly beloved. This is the second time now we hear about Daniel. What? He is greatly loved. Understand the words that I speak to you and stand upright. For I have now been sent to you while he was speaking his word to me. I stood trembling. Then he said to me, do not fear Daniel. For from the first day that you sent your heart to understand and to humble yourself before your God, your words were heard, and I have come because of your words. How many days has it been? Hmm? Three weeks? Yeah. 24? Yeah, 21? Yes, 21. Three weeks. Good. Very good. You're doing some good math here. <laughs> Very good. So... But the prince of the kingdom of Persia withstood me 21 days. That is this. He's the Lord Jesus Christ, the prince of... Who's the prince of the kingdom of Persia? What do you think? Hmm? Lucifer. Yes. Good. Very good. The prince of this world is coming and has nothing in me. Remember? Remember? Those are the words of Jesus Christ. So whenever he says the prince of this world, the prince of the kingdom of, the, of Persia, that means Satan, Lucifer. Love it. Very good. So Lucifer is the prince of the kingdom of Persia, withheld God. What? Withhold God? No. Okay. What is happening basically, remember, uh, do you know the story of Job? Satan, Lucifer will go and complain to God about Job, right? And then we'll have like a conversation. So it's those instances that God does not uh, like, you know, dismiss Satan right away. He gives some time so that he can um, uh, prove that humans are worthy or not worthy, but like uh, they can... Uh, have faith in God that he will come and save them. Okay, that's why. That's what it means, basically. So, and behold, Michael, one of the chief priests, came to help me. It's not that God needs help from Michael. Okay. But it's more like, for I had been left alone there with the kings of Persia. Now I have come to make you understand what will happen. Basically, God... It's kind of like standing with Satan and it's like, you know what? You're wasting my time. And this is not worth it. I'm going to leave you with the Archangel Michael here and he will take care of you because you're not worth my time. I want to go and speak to Daniel because he's been standing there for 21 days. That's it. Okay? Does that make it simple? That's all what it means. Okay? So for all of us, when we come to church... Where do you see the icon of Archangel Michael? It's always on the right hand. If you're facing this, if you're facing east, it's always on the right, on our right hand side. Okay. Because this is just a small meditation is Archangel Michael represents strength, our strength. When we are weak, God's strength sent to us to help us. Okay. So every Coptic church, when you go in, you should be able to see Archangel Michael on the right hand and Archangel Gabriel. We said what? On the left. Because on the left, when kind of like another meditation is kind of like we're uh, struggling. So we need a little bit of comfort, a message, a good message, a good news. Archangel Gabriel brings always about the birth of the Lord Jesus Christ, the incarnation, right? To Zacharias, to St. Mary, to Daniel, as we saw last week. So we saw Gabriel last week. We saw Archangel Michael this week. Okay? Beautiful. So God tells him, well, I left it to Michael. He will deal with him in no time. He's a cake for him. But I, but you're more important to me, Daniel. That's why I came to you. 
you're more important to me. I love you. You're greatly loved. Okay? Here I am coming to talk to you. And then the Lord speaking. Now I have come, uh, verse 14, Daniel chapter 10, verse 14. Now I have come to make you understand what will happen to your people in the latter days. For the vision refers to many days yet to come. Remember we said why Daniel was kind of stressed? Because Cyrus ordered the people to go back and he ordered everyone in the kingdom to help them. Yet, for three years, they kind of, uh, we're gonna book, we're gonna go back to Jerusalem. We're gonna still build Jerusalem. But I'm, I'm, I'm comfortable here having everything. And this is us when we are comfortable with sin. When we are comfortable in the misery or like in the, in whatever it is, you know, I'm in my comfort zone. I don't want to leave, even if it's, uh, uh, if it, even if it means like I'm I'm gonna do better, you know, something familiar is better than something new that's not familiar. Yes, Maria. But I thought we were waiting. Yeah. So why were they so uh, That's why Daniel was stressed because from year one of King Cyrus reign, he ordered them to go back, but he left them the freedom to go back right so this is this what we're reading now is like three years after that and daniel is seeing like the people are not going back that's what you've been some looking people, for some people didn't want to go back yes it's been 70 years they already like established themselves you know settled started their own business so you know what we're good here i'm not going to go back to jerusalem start from zero again I'm good here. And you're going to see here that God basically gives them the choice. If whoever wants to say that's fine, and but whoever wants to go, that's even better. Yeah. Good. So we continue reading. Now I have come to make you... Yeah. Um, so verse 15. When he had spoken such words to me, I turned my face toward the ground and became speechless. And suddenly one having the likeness of the sons of men touch my lips. So now, not only he's seeing him, now he's touching what? His lips. Who else was touched? His lips were touched. Similar vision. Not a... Isaiah. Isaiah the prophet. In chapter 6. In chapter 6, Isaiah the prophet, chapter 6, uh, an angel flew with a call from the throne of God and touched his lips and told him, now you are sanctified. So now in this case here, this is also another representation of the body partaking communion, that he touched his lips. So he told him... Uh, Then I opened my mouth and spoke, saying to him who stood before me, My Lord, because of the vision, my sorrows have overwhelmed me, and I have retained no strength. For how can this servant of my Lord talk with you, my Lord, as for me no strength remains in me now, nor in any breath left in me? Now Daniel is so tired. He's telling God, I'm tired. Uh, you just gave me enough strength to talk to you. Then again, the one having the likeness of man touched me and strengthened me again. Right? And he said, oh man, greatly loved. Look at this. Uh, look at this love. So basically like Daniel is, is, is after 20 days like fasting and praying and God, the Lord Jesus Christ like, you're greatly loved. Like, I can't, I'm tired. Oh, I know you're tired, but you're greatly loved. It, look, look, like, can you, can you imagine, like, the Lord Jesus Christ is just, like, this is before the incarnation of Christ. He's sitting beside Daniel. He's like, it's okay. I'm here. I'm here with you. Right? He's just tapping on him. He's like, 
it's okay. I'm going to strengthen you. That's what truly happens with us when we things are just messed up in my life, completely messed up. And I'm before the Lord Jesus Christ at certain point when he sees fit, he will come and touch me and comfort me and say, because you are loved, because you are loved. So let's finish this chapter. <clears throat> and he said, verse 19, O man, greatly loved, fear not. Peace be with you. Be strong. Yes, be strong. So when he spoke to me, I was strengthened and said, let my Lord speak for you have strengthened me. Then he said, do you know why I have come to you? And now I must return to fight with the prince of Persia. And when I have gone forth, indeed the prince of Greece will come. But I will tell you what is noted in the scripture of truth. No one upholds me against these except Michael, your prince. Okay. So basically he's telling him, now you know why I came to you, Daniel. So I'm going to go now, but still there is other parts are going to come. Like the, the pre uh, Greece part and uh, so on. But Michael is the messenger of God finishes the jobs. Okay. So this is chapter 10. Chapter 11. Also in the first year of Darius the Medi, I even, I stood up to confirm and strengthen him. And now I will tell you the truth. Behold, three more kings will arise in Persia, and fourth shall be far richer than them all. By his strength, through his riches, he shall stir up all against the realm of Greece. Then a mighty king shall arise, who shall rule with great dominion, and do according to his will. And when he has arisen his kingdom shall be broken up and divided toward the four winds of heaven but not among his posterity nor according to his dominion with which he ruled for his kingdom shall be uprooted even for other others besides these make it simple okay the rest of the chapter 11 basically he's gonna say tell daniel what is going to happen even after the coming of christ and even during our days okay and basically he's gonna say there are gonna basically be two sides a southern side and a northern side all or what we know nowadays uh the west and the east and they are going to be in continuous fight and this fight is going to continue Sometimes the East will win, and sometimes the West will win. And that's what we see throughout history after the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. You know, when you see like uh, the, the, the Greek, the Greece empire, right, winning. And then after it, you find like the Romans. And then you find then after that from the East, right, the coming of the Arabs and um, those... Uh, uh, kingdoms from the east taking over and then the west coming back and so on so forth and this goes on back and forth until today including what is happening these days okay this is all what's in chapter 11 okay in lots of details to the point that daniel even daniel could not understand what is happening because it's beyond his time but now we can see a little bit a little bit of what's happening. Uh, this is in Book of Revelation, also called the war between, what is it? Uh, huh? Armageddon, yeah. Uh, Agog and Magog also mentioned something like that. So uh, this is just going on. So this is chapter 11. Chapter 11 is way, way, way beyond Daniel. 
into our days and beyond our days into even the second coming of Christ. Okay? So I'm not going to go through chapter 11. Is that okay? But I'm just gave you a summary of chapter 11. Go home and you're going to see that. Chapter 11, this is what it talks is it all talks about. Okay? But I'm just going to jump to verse uh, he always talks about um, uh, the Antichrist. The Antichrist, the strongest that will come out. Um, uh, verse 36 in, in chapter 11. Then the king shall be according to his own will. He shall exalt and magnify himself above every god. Shall speak blasphemes against the god of gods. This is the Antichrist. Okay. Remember there was an Antichrist before the birth of the Lord Jesus Christ. We spoke about that in chapter 8. Remember those? Okay, good. Now this is another Antichrist, which is before the coming, the second coming of Christ. Okay. So he's talking about that king. So when he talks about this king in, chap in, in verse 36, this is the Antichrist. Okay. And he talks about him. He shall prosper till the wrath has been accomplished for what has been determined shall be done. He shall regard neither the God of his fathers, of his fathers, the God of his fathers. That means he's going to be a Jew. The God of his fathers. Okay, That means the Antichrist is from the Jews. Okay. The desire of women, the desire of women, that means it's not like the lustful side, but this is referring to the desire of women back then is that all women were were, were desiring to uh, uh, give birth to the Messiah. So this is the desire of women. So he doesn't, he's not going to regard that. Nor regard any God, for he shall exalt himself above them all. But in there place he shall honor a god of uh, fortresses and god which his fathers did not know. He shall honor with gold and silver, with precious stones and ple pleasant things. Thus he shall act against the strongest fortresses with foreign god, which he shall acknowledge and advance its glory. And he shall cause them to rule over many and divide the land for gain. Remember colonization? Okay, it's still going on. Dividing the land for gain. That's colonization. At the time of the end of the king of the south shall attack him. So this king that we're talking about, the Antichrist, is kingdom of the north. And the king of the north shall come against him like a whirlwind with chariots horsemen and with many ships and he shall enter the countries overwhelm them and pass through listen to the next he shall also enter the glorious land jerusalem and many countries shall be overthrown but these shall escape from his hand edom moab and the prominent people of uh, Ammon. Those are the nations around um, uh, Jerusalem. He shall stretch out his hand against the countries and the land of Egypt shall not escape. He shall have power over the treasures of gold and silver and over all the precious things of Egypt also Libyans and Ethiopians shall follow at his heel. Ethiopians also uh, in the Bible many times is also uh, includes uh, Sudan as well, like that area. This is what's happening is like the precious gold and, and stones and things um, of that land is being all somehow, we don't know why, uh, the, the like 
things are not taken care of, but it's uh, very obvious that uh, the best of the land is being stolen somewhere to the uh, other countries that are benefiting. But news from the east and the north shall trouble him. Therefore, he shall go out with great fury to destroy and annihilate many. And he shall plant tents of his palace between the seas and the glorious holy mountains. Yet he shall come to his end and no one will help him. How are we doing? Can we take uh, two minutes? I finished chapter 12. You have two minutes. Two minutes. Two minutes and we finish chapter 12. At that time, chapter 12, Michael shall stand up. The great prince who stands watch over the sons of your people. And there shall be a time of trouble such as never was since there was a nation even to that time. At that time, your people shall be delivered. Everyone who is found written in the book. That means those who answered God's calling. Okay. So it, it's not a blank check for all the people, right? Only those who answer God's calling. Some to shame and everlasting contempt. Those who are wise shall shine. And again, if you switch to Revelation, you will see that those who uh, accept God will shine. Like the brightness of permanent and those who turn many to righteousness like the stars forever and ever. But you, Daniel, now this is the end of Daniel. This is the end of Daniel's life. But you, Daniel, shut up the words and seal the book. Remember, John, also the same words. Until the time of end, many shall run to and fro. And knowledge shall increase. There you go. There you go. God is telling him all the words that you put in your book. People will go back and forth to your words. To this book of Daniel. And people every time they open the book of Daniel. They will learn something new. He did not say. People will uh, uh, gain knowledge. But he said. And knowledge shall increase. Every time they open your book their knowledge will increase. Okay? Beautiful. Then I, Daniel, looked, and three stood, two uh, others on this river bank and other on the river bank, and one said to the man clothed linen, who was above the waters of rivers, the waters of the rivers, uh, referring to the Holy Spirit, by the way. Okay? Just uh, to give you an idea. We could have stopped here. How long shall the fulfillment of these wonders be? In the book of Revelation, again, another scene similar to this. Till when, Lord, you will leave your people. All right? And here it goes. Then I heard the man clothed in linen was above the waters of the river. And he held up his right hand and his left hand to heaven. And swore to by him who lives forever that it shall be for a time, times and half a time. And when this part. Uh, power of the holy people has been completely shattered all these things shall be finished although I heard I did not understand okay then I said my lord what shall be the end of these things and he said go your way Daniel for the words are closed up and sealed till the, till the time of end many shall be, be purified made white and refined, but the wicked shall do wickedly, and none of the wicked shall understand, but the wise shall understand. And from the time that daily sacrifice is taken away, and the abomination of desolation is set up, there shall be 1,290 days. We're not going to do math. Okay, that's a different story. Blessed is he who waits. And comes to the 1,335 days. But you go your way till the end. And you shall rest. And will. Listen to this. Listen to this. Because this is amazing. It's such a very short verse. But it's, it's, it's mind blowing. The Jews did not know. What the rising of 
bodies or flesh means. But Daniel is the first person to tell us about resurrection of the body. This is what he says. But you, Daniel, go your way till the end, for you shall rest. That means you're going to sleep, repose, die. And will arise to your inheritance at the end of days. So this is resurrection. The resurrection of the bodies. Okay, It's mentioned somewhere else also here. The resurrection of the bodies, those who... Uh, uh, Die will come forth. Um, okay. Uh, and glory be to God forever and ever. Amen. Any questions? Any questions? Yes. Uh, the prince of Greece, yes. Lucifer, but Lucifer at the time of Greece. Because it's seen like Lucifer or Satan is, is working um, behind the scenes of all the evil that we see in the world. But it just takes like different forms. Like, you know, yeah, the Persia, the Greece the Romans, and so on, and continues. Very good. Yeah, good. Good question. Uh, very good question. Other questions? How are we doing? Are we good? Yeah? Okay, uh, two things that you would take from this chapter or from Daniel, the last three chapters that we went through really quick. What would you take? Mm. Two things. Anything. Yes, Maya. God sees us and hears us from the beginning. God sees us and hears us when we are praying. Yeah, good. What's the result of that? Yes, good. He will reveal the things. He will come and comfort me. He will give me that sense and that assurance of his love. Okay, another point. Thank you, good. Yes, Patrick. <clears throat> be patient patient wait for god good yeah that's very good thank you and i'm just gonna add to that and when the lord calls upon me i should never delay i should never delay because a big theme happening here is that God prepared everything for his people to return to Jerusalem. And yet, many of them went, but a bigger number delayed. A bigger number slacked. So slacking in spiritual life is no good. Slacking in spiritual life is no good. Because there is no excuse. Because we saw Daniel, every time he was tired, he said, I'm tired. The Lord Jesus Christ came and tapped on his shoulder. He said, I love you. It's okay. Come, I will strengthen you. So that's very important to take from this chapter as well. Being patient, wait for the Lord. And when the Lord opens the door, please do not hesitate. Okay? Very good. Lovely. There are two additional chapters for Daniel that are not written in those normal, regular Bibles. You find them in Coptic Reader. Um, I would ask Adil to please uh, next week to go to uh, the next chapter. I think it's Susan. Yes, I think so. Let me just uh, 13. Yes, chapter 13 is the story of the chaste Susanna. It's an amazing story. One of Adil's favorites. So 
I ask him that next week we come back. Now, those two chapters that the additions or, or the completion of Daniel, chapter 13 and 14, that you don't find them in regular Bibles, they are pseudo-canonical, okay? Uh, the story of Susanna and the other one in chapter 14, two stories, two miracles. Uh, as you're going to see, Susanna, it happened during when Daniel was youth, when Daniel was a young man, actually. Okay? Um, so you're going to see his wisdom. You're going to see evil. You're going to see uh, chastity. And even if it will cost a person's life, God will never uh, abandon his children, those who are faithful to him. So that's a very important thing to see and to look for in the story of Susan. Anyone knows uh, the story of Susan? Yeah, good. Yeah, when do we read it in the church? Bright Saturday, yes. Very good. And there is one person usually who reads the whole story. I'm not going to say. <laughs> Uh, God be with you. Thank you so much. It's been a great blessing to be here. Glory be to God forever and ever. Amen. Let's stand up for prayer together. Yeah. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, one God. Amen. Dear Lord Jesus Christ, we thank you, Lord, so much for all the blessings. We thank you, Lord, that you have given us this special blessing to go in on this journey with your servant, Daniel, whom you loved so much and pleased you to reveal to him all the things that to come and the things that even beyond his understanding. And when he was stressed, when he distressed, you came also and comforted him. Lord Jesus Christ, we look forward for your comfort as well for us. And that you strengthen us to always live righteously as those great men and women who pleased you, Lord. Who pleased you with their faithfulness, not just by works. And because of their faithfulness, you help them to do your works. Through the intercession of the Holy Theotokos St. Mary, St. Mark the Apostle, and the prayers of the righteous Daniel the prophet, make us worthy, the Lord, to pray thank for the saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. God, thou be done on earth as in heaven. Give us this day of daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. In Christ Jesus our Lord, but then the kingdom of God, glory for and for. Amen. And now the love of God, the Father, grace of his only begotten Son, our Lord God and Savior, Jesus Christ, gift and communion, fellowship with the Holy Spirit be with you all. Go in peace. The peace of the Lord be with you. Um, 